Hi everyone, my name is Mark, a final year environmental science student at the University of Hong Kong. I first became interested in environmental issues from my um, volunteering trips when I was in high school. So I went to Fiji for uh, coastal management uh, conservation work, working with the locals to set up marine conservation areas, um, to clean up um, invasive species that's gonna um, hurt coral reefs and also plant mangroves. So I was also there to restore the water tanks, working with the locals. So that's my actual first-hand experience. Um, basically just seeing, witnessing the impact of climate change and just thinking of how fortunate we are in Hong Kong because we don't really experience the first-hand experience of um, climate, change, climate change in general. Hence, uh, that's how I got more um, interested in the realm of climate change and environmental issues. And um, that's also why I want to pursue a degree in environmental science in Hong Kong because I want to learn more about how we can fix it, how we can, as humans, how uh, can we harness the knowledge uh, behind environmental science and climate change and contribute um, to a better society and work with locals and use that power and knowledge to make a difference. So um, over the past few years, I've been having the opportunity to participate in a lot of different kinds of extracurricular activities. So at COP26 and COP27, I was both a youth observer and delegate of Hong Kong to these conferences. I had the chance to be there to witness the negotiation that are happening at, uh, at the first hand level in the climate change world. Um, I was doing a lot of advocacy work and lobbying work in which um, I was working with a bunch of global youth uh, from all around the world and we had the chance to lobby different government officials and also in IGOs representatives in different topics. So in my case, I was focusing on climate adaptation in which we were formulating uh, youth policy proposals and meeting with IGO representatives to voice out uh, for global youth. With COP being the biggest climate change conference in the world, it is a chance for everyone that are passionate about climate change to gather in the same room. So it was a perfect opportunity for me to meet everyone from every part of the world. For example, one morning I was meeting with a group of Asian youth and in the afternoon I was chatting with two African national climate champions. And at night I was having dinner with a table of uh, Canadians First Nation people so just exchanging these stories, their culture, their experiences, um, their climate solution and their climate impact is, is, a, is a great rem reminder for me that um, climate change needs a people-centric approach. And that's what I was bringing back to Hong Kong to share the story to my peers and also a lot of different climate advocates in Hong Kong, uh, which is also an element that I think is the most important uh, in my participation at COP27. So last year, April, I had the chance to go on an Antarctica climate change expedition. The whole expedition, I was one of the, I was one of the 150 expeditioner from all around the world with over 35 different nationalities. So just being there with, um, on this expedition, gave me a chance to learn more about the um, practice and action that most of these uh, climate change advocates and enthusiasts are already doing in different parts of the world. So when I was in Antarctica. Um, I saw different occurrences of climate change impacts that reminds me of the urgency of the climate crisis that we are now currently facing. For example, I saw the abnormal occurrence of rainfall in Antarctica, which is not supposed to happen because Antarctica is such a, uh, it's a place with lack of moisture and with cold temperature, rainfall is not supposed to happen. But with climate change, with increasing temperature, it increase um, the moisture content in Antarctica, hence um, having these occurrences, abnormal occurrences of rainfall, which is the first indicator of climate change firsthand in the most remote place on Earth. The second thing is ice cap melting, in which during the week that when we're in Antarctica, um, there's, a, there's an ice shelf the size of Rome 
uh, collapse and, and disintegrate it within days when we're in Antarctica, which is another sign of climate change impacting Antarctica. When I was back to Hong Kong from Antarctica from this expedition, I really wanted to tell my peers and my community about the importance of our actions towards this climate crisis. Even a place like Antarctica, that remote, we, our actions still have an impact on the biodiversity and the natural environment of Antarctica, which means our actions matter in this fight against the climate crisis.